This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Beloved in Christ, welcome to North Lake Home Church on this Palm Sunday. I've got my palm branch all ready to wave, uh, trimmed out of my backyard just this morning for worship. And actually, Mrs. Carroll has also encouraged children at North Lake who want to color a paper palm branch to do so. Uh, she's provided a link on our Facebook page for a branch that you can color and then cut out to use. Perhaps you'll want to do that and even use it as a part of this service. Before we say anything more about this worship video, I want to share with you uh, just three short emails for our North Lake check-in this morning. After the worship service last Sunday, the McAlexanders wrote, Awesome, great message for the times. Am forwarding this to friends who are not Presbyterians. Thank you, Jeff. Bill and Linda McAlexander, Dell Webb, Spruce Creek. Thanks, Bill and Linda. And of course, we encourage you to forward or share our worship videos with anyone. It's not at all important right now what denomination we are, especially now. It's about trusting in the Lord, not uh, any church's brand name. So let's all do our part to share God's good love and grace with anyone we can. One of our original deacons at North Lake, Peg Kelly, uh, moved away a year ago uh, to be closer to family. And she writes, How wonderful to listen to Pastor Jeff's sermon, the great music, and to feel God's presence even from the village of Cuba, New York. Yes, I really still live in a village. Please know I pray for you all daily. There is no distance in prayer. God bless all of you and keep you strong and well. Peg Kelly. And thanks, Peg, for that heartwarming greeting and for your prayers. Another one of the emails that I really appreciated is, is one that recognizes the contributions made by so many for these videos and worship each week. Like this one. Dear Pastor Jeff, we've been so pleased and surprised with the virtual services this past couple of weeks. Thank you and everyone involved for reaching out to us in our homes so that we may still feel a part of North Lake worship. The messages have been both meaningful and comforting. We attend the traditional 1115 services, thus not hearing the praise band before. The music this past week was exceptional. Please convey our thanks and gratitude for such an uplifting song. While sheltering in place, it's reassuring to know that our Sunday mornings can still be spent at North Lake. Sue and Andy Clay, Stonecrest Community. And thanks, Sue and Andy. You can be sure that I've already passed your email along to our worship team and the praise band. And I'm also really glad that we can still spend a part of our Sundays together worshiping the Lord. In this worship video, uh, the, the music again starts off with the praise band. And later on, you'll, you'll hear the Ensley Family Ensemble with Chris Ensley, our organist and choir director, at the piano bench while his family's singing. And his wife, Anita, will be back at the end to lead the singing of the Lord's Prayer. We are, at North Lake, typically singing the Lord's Prayer in the sanctuary after communion. And this morning, we are in, encouraging you to share in the sacrament of communion, right where you are. So you can even pause this video here to be able to go get a, a piece of bread or a cracker and a cup of juice and have them ready for that part of the service which comes very near the end. I have a portion of a home-baked loaf of bread that neighbors dropped off at our house a couple of days ago. In fact, I, I would have brought the whole loaf to break it, except I've been very busy enjoying that bread for several days. What I did do is I, I, cut, off, I cut off a slice that I'd be able to share 
uh, as, for this morning and for our worship. The, the friends who brought that to us are very strong believers in the Lord. And the husband actually teaches at a Christian university. He also sent me an email of an image that's been circulating on the internet. Perhaps you've seen it. It's labeled the last Zoom. And it depicts Jesus as he might have looked if he were also facing the COVID-19 virus. Maintaining social distance at the Last Supper. On a Zoom screen with all of his other disciples. A video conference of the Last Supper. Uh, we all have to adapt. For this morning, I'm also using very simple communion ware that was made for me by my daughter Rachel years ago when she was in a pottery class. And in the service, Pastor Jim McNall leads us in the morning prayers. The message is Journey to Hope, based on the Palm Sunday passage in Luke. I do want to make sure you know that our Holy Week uh, upcoming will feature video devotionals for both Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, provided by Pastor Jim and Pastor Lynn. And that'll be out by midweek in the congregational email with links so that you can go and view those. Now, let's worship the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to God.
on that very first Palm Sunday, Jesus allowed the crowd to form a parade and cheer him. He had never done that before. Why did he do it? Why did he allow them to sing their hallelujahs and their praises? He knew that in the crowd there were those who needed to thank him. His disciples who had given up everything to follow him. People that he had healed. People whose lives he had turned from darkness into light. People whose children found someone who loved them and wanted to be with them. Jesus gave them a chance to praise him. As we go to prayer on this Palm Sunday, let us give praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord, we are so grateful for you, for committing yourself to live life on this earth as we do, to make God's will for your life more important than your own desires, and to enter into Holy Week with a parade of thanksgiving and a Maundy Thursday supper to explain to your disciples what the crucifixion was all about. Lord, today, hear our prayers. Help us through this difficult time in the crisis. Give us your power. Give us peace and protection by your Holy Spirit. As more people get sick, renew us with your healing power. We lift up to you our world our nation, our local leaders, our medical leaders, those who are on the front line, doctors and nurses and policemen and first responders and military. Lord, we lift all of them up to you. What we need from you during this pandemic is we need your your presence. We need to rely on you as we spend close time with family. We want to think that everything we say and everything we do is what you want us to do, but it's not true. So forgive us, Lord. Renew our commitment to you in this time of worship so that our prayers are received by you And you hear us, and you pour out what we can't do on our own. We praise you for Jesus, and we praise you for this holy week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Please pray with me. Lord, speak to us now through your word, and we will trust you, and we will do our utmost to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, listen now to the the word of God in Luke chapter 19, reading verses 20 to 40. And we pick up right after Jesus has taught a parable to the crowd in Jericho. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as they had been told. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they sat Jesus on it, and he rode along. The people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. That spring day, they had no worries about social distancing, about hugs or handshakes or being in a crowd. I hope you can picture that procession of pilgrims approaching Jerusalem for the Passover festival. Many had gone quite a distance to be there. Some would be in Jerusalem several times a year. Some would make it there once a year. For some, it was the journey of a lifetime. And it was the place to be. Markets and lodgings teeming with people. It was good for business. Big business for Jerusalem. Big offerings for the temple. There were no government guidelines forbidding assemblies of more than 10 people. No stay-at-home orders. And the locals loved it. Actually, if they didn't mind crowds, they loved it. It was a prime season for people watching. They were curious, many of them, about the accents and dress and manners of the strangers who came. They might also catch a glimpse of a famous leader or landowner. On that day, the the jostling multitude coming down from the Mount of Olives 
created a stir. And they surrounded a Galilean, Jesus of Nazareth, who developed quite a reputation as a teacher and healer, including some stunning deeds of power. The throng paraded ahead and behind Jesus. Men and women and children along the the road inched in closer and leaned to get a better view. That mass of humanity must have sensed something special, even historic. In front of him, they threw down coats and robes and, and branches to cover the dusty road. And they met him with smiles and, 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 and jubilant cheers. Um, those cheers would have echoed against the stony hillsides, the backdrop to his walk down and into Jerusalem. Actually, what the crowd was doing uh, was following the urging of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. They were singing, Hosanna, blessed in the name of of the Lord is the one who comes. They were cheering loudly, but listen also to what Zechariah tells them to do. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Their humble king was arriving in the capital city. The rejoicing was great. The shouting was loud. They were making a fuss. Verse 37 actually reported the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice. With a loud voice. Actually in Greek, that's literally with a megaphone. With a great or loud voice. They were crying out to God, praising the Lord for the arrival of Jesus. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, the Pharisees often thought they were in charge and speaking for God, even when they weren't. And some of them jumped into that role and told the teacher, to rebuke his disciples, put a lid on it. And Jesus' answer is amazing. He said simply, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Even if we were to muffle the crowd, nature itself reverberates with joy over the news that I bring, that I represent. Friends, if you've ever been to Israel, you know that there are stones everywhere. Florida, we've got lots of sand and shells, not so many stones. But in Israel, stones every direction you look. And Jesus was saying, you can't begin to count the number of voices that are rejoicing and shout out about my arrival and what this means for the hope of the future. You can't count it, and you certainly cannot stop it. You know, this sanctuary and our fellowship hall may be empty this Palm Sunday, and we are not going to gather, and we'll not be able to wave palms and sing the great hymns and songs that launch Holy Week. But there is no stopping Jesus and his triumphal entry. Not at all. And especially now when we need him so. And there's no stopping the hosannas in our hearts and in our homes as we praise God wherever we are. And there's no stopping the church, the disciples from praying and praising God and asking, thy kingdom come. There's no stopping our God who loves the world so much that he sends his son into the hot spots of sin and sadness where he might be infected. 
where he's vulnerable and mortal, just, just like us. And there's no stopping the God who sends his son into the world and into the city where he, he should occupy the throne. But instead, he receives a crown of thorns. And he's mocked as the pretender king of Israel. There's no stopping a God who sends his son into our human turmoil and suffering. So our Heavenly Father also, he understands, he experiences our anguish and grief, especially during this dreadful pestilence. You see, there's no stopping Jesus from his appointed hours on the cross. There's no stopping Jesus from his rendezvous with death, but there's also no stopping the living, breathing escape from the tomb. There's no stopping the crucifixion and the resurrection and God's plan for salvation that is through his Son, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. You can't put a lid on it and hold Jesus in the grave, they found out. The good news of God's love is irrepressible, and so you can't stop our joyful praise, our megaphone rejoicing for all that God is doing. And if you tried, the stones themselves would shout out. Perhaps you've sensed it already, I hope you have, that really what this Palm Sunday passage about is about is, is it's a journey. It starts in Jericho, in the Jordan River Valley, and Jesus ascends up into the Judean highlands, the hillsides, and then it's a descent that is from the Mount of Olives down into Jerusalem just below. Jesus comprehends all the ups and downs of our journeys. He understands that. And he was on a journey that didn't stop just when he got to the city gate and went into the city. Most all of us who have made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem have also walked down that hill from one of the most famous views in the world from the Mount of Olives. And most of us also have walked the Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering, which approximates the shameful, painful route that Jesus went through the streets to his execution. I want to make sure that you understand. In this ominous, and bewildering time, when we're being told that we cannot travel. We're not allowed to be out and, 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 and uh, um, running errands unless it's for something essential or um, critical needs or work. When we're being told to stay at home, I want to make sure that you know that you are still on a journey to hope. Because we are not, we are not stuck or isolated spiritually. And not even a pandemic can cancel our journey to hope. Through nearly five years, I've been trying repeatedly to help you understand that being a disciple, being a follower of Jesus, involves two dimensions, two aspects. First, it's an intentional decision to accept the grace that God offers in Christ. To accept it to receive his love and the forgiveness for sins, the salvation and eternal life, to accept that. And by the way, when we share together in a few moments with communion, I hope that even as you take those elements, you know, I, Jesus, I am accepting all that you offer. It's a time again to renew and refresh that receiving of, receiving of God's grace. But the second dimension here is a lifelong journey in a Jesus direction. That's what we're on. It's a journey of grace. It's a journey to hope. And it's a journey 
that cannot be interrupted even by COVID-19. Before moving to Florida to become pastor of North Lake, I had the privilege of serving a congregation in Cincinnati for 22 years, Northminster Presbyterian Church. And just last year, one of the ministries we launched celebrated their 20th anniversary. About six years ago, they changed the original name to become Journey to Hope. And they offer support groups and coaching groups with professional leadership for those who are grieving, going through a job loss or job search, um, caregiving, memory loss, single parenting, chronic pain, and a host of other challenges. The executive director, Diane Kinsella, is a brilliant, faithful, and energetic leader and a dear friend. We had a marvelous opportunity this past week to catch up in a Zoom meeting. And she told me that in 2019 alone, Journey to Hope served hundreds of people from 10 different counties and 90 zip codes. And they've also developed a capacity now to do even more with video conferencing. So their reach now includes clients and people who are all the way out in the state of Washington. What's their mission? They say their mission is, we empower people with the skills to cope and adapt when life takes a difficult turn. Wow. You think they might be even busier in 2020? when life has taken a difficult turn for everyone in the world, including the 10 million who just signed up for unemployment in the United States in the last several weeks, and those who are already grieving by the thousands, and caregivers stretched beyond their capacity, and parents overwhelmed even in their own homes, and on and on and on. I submit to you that we are all on a journey to hope with the Lord who empowers us to cope and to adapt when life takes a difficult turn, to put it mildly right now. And together we share this journey. We share the journey through all the turbulence and trepidation you are not alone. We are not alone. I love a tender and, and simple sentence that Paul writes near the end of the book of Romans. That, that epistle is so loaded with gospel truth that we might overlook something as simple as this. But I want, you, I want you to see this. This is in Romans chapter 15, verse 24. Paul writes, For I do hope to see you on my journey, and to be sent on by you once I have enjoyed your company for a little while. That's beautiful, isn't it? I hope to see you on the journey, to enjoy your company for a while. Then we'll separate. You'll send me on or I'll send you on. And our journey has a wonderful final rendezvous. There's no stopping us on our journey to hope. There's no stopping us when we put our lives in the hands of the Lord God and follow Jesus. We who trust in the Lord are better equipped. We are better equipped than others who have no hope or bearings during this crisis. Christian writer and philosopher Dallas Willard was known to say, Christians are people who are better off dead. Wow. That was his provocative way of echoing Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, where Paul said, For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. No one here 
is giving up. Not even close. Nor are we talking about being reckless with the risks of exposure. No. But what this is, it's big picture. It's seeing this pandemic in the light of God's salvation plan and history, which is so much grander than what we are tending to think and focus on right now, moment by moment as we try to track with what's happening in the news. Our journey to hope isn't simply to get to the end of the week or the end of April. Our journey isn't to survive the COVID-19 virus. Our journey to hope isn't to get back together again on campus at North Lake for worship. No, our, our journey to hope has a destination far greater than Jerusalem, a God-prepared city, teaches Hebrews 11, a city whose architect and builder is God. I think North Laker Jan Mahaffey understands our journey to hope very well. Uh, Look what she wrote in this excerpt from an email this past week. Here's what she said. Can you imagine the joy, hugs, laughter, celebrations, and grateful hearts that will gather together at North Lake in the near future? What a day that will be! Years ago, my parents would winter at Daytona Beach uh, at a trailer park. During our Christmas vacation from school teaching, we would visit. As we drove up, there would be my mom sliding the glass doors back and shouting, Al, they're here! A great reunion would follow. The Lord spoke to my heart the other day. He said, this North Lake regathering is just a warm-up for the church when we arrive in heaven. I smile and my heart sings as I wait to hear, Al, they're here. Until that day, Jen Mahaffey. Thanks, Jen. Until that day, until that reunion, you and I are on a journey to hope, and nothing can stop it. And nothing can silence our rejoicing and our shouting gratitude and thanks to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, they're here. They're all here and ready to share together at the table that you have prepared. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to come to this table to share in the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I encourage you to think of receiving these elements, even right where you are, as a way of accepting yet again the grace that God offers us in Jesus Christ. As we partake of this bread and this cup, it's a way of knowing that we receive God's love, his his forgiveness of sin and the salvation and eternal life that is the destination for our journey to hope. Let's pray. God, bless now these elements, this bread and this cup, that as we receive them and partake of them, we will know that you abide in us and we abide in you. We belong to you forever. And so we pray with gratitude and trust in Jesus' name. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also when they had eaten, our Savior took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sin. 
And Paul the Apostle reminds us that whenever we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we are remembering the Lord's death until he returns. And so now I invite you, as you are ready, to go ahead and partake of the bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Anyone who comes to me shall never hunger. Anyone who believes in me shall not thirst. Anyone who comes to me, I will not cast away. We do this in remembrance of him. And we take the cup of salvation poured out for you and me. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who trust in him. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. Our benediction this morning is from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Amen. Mm -hmm.